Hello viewers, you may have noticed in recent videos I've been trying my utmost to really improve my overall ability at Gran Turismo 7 through the method of time trialing. Time trialing is where you just complete lots of laps and do lots of mistakes like this. Find yourself skipping sideways at 100 miles an hour across the sand. Before, after about a million attempts, you slowly but surely begin chipping away at your best lap times. On this occasion here at Willow Springs in the BMW, put myself quite high up on the leaderboard on a Monday. But this Monday was a new challenge. Dragon Trail Gardens with the fearsome chicane and then the long triple right-hander. Very, very difficult corners to get right. And the triple chicane, as you see here, is one of the most difficult corners on this circuit, if not in the game, to be honest, because of these big sausages, the big red bits there. And here's an example of how to take the corner somewhat correctly. And here's an example of how to take it somewhat absolutely not correctly. Now, how about this long triple right-hander? Well, here's a bad example of how to take it. Getting quite an awful entry, let's be honest. And then on the way out, just accelerating way too soon. And I'm going to be off the track. Here is a slightly better example of how to take this turn. And as you can see, just getting a really good rotation mid-turn. The corner goes on forever. But let's move it on here. Because I did a video on this race earlier last week. And it was a very, very fun race. I really much enjoyed it. Um, so it's on the channel if you want to watch it. But this session is actually going to begin in the Porsche. The go-to car. And it's going to end in the wall. Once again, as you can see. Fantastic stuff. So I decided, let's jump on to the go-to car for this race, for this track, for the leaderboard anyway, the Nissan GTR. I hadn't actually had this car in the game, I hadn't used it, so I bought it, whipped on a livery, at least I tried to, and then the eternal spinning circle of doom came and killed my console, so I had to restart it. Then, luckily enough, the second time of asking it worked, and as you can see, quite a nice livery onto the car. So let's jump into this session, shall we? Uh, get the medium tyres, the best tyres that you're allowed for this race. And we are now ready to lap the Fearsome Dragon Trail Gardens circuit. And try to really improve my ability around this track, a track which I'm not that good at, I would say. Nought miles on the clock, as you can see. A brand new car. And it's time to really set a better time. So what I'm going to show you here is my very first lap and to show you the process of what it looks like to go from not having driven the car around this track ever to then setting theoretically a good time later on in the video. So you can see I've already got a, a time, my record 130.284. Now that was done in the Porsche so we can kind of ignore that. I'm going to try to set my best possible time in the Nissan GTR. It's the car that was at the top of the leaderboard, time trial leaderboard that is for this circuit uh, so first split not too bad what's the split time going to be 26.8 down towards this hairpin then breaking just before the 100 board very tight corner this one probably the tightest corner on the track actually and a bit of uh, wheel spin on the exit and then you come into this middle sector which is very technical twisty and very difficult to get right uh, lots of fast flowing corners here or sort of medium speed corners i would say then this one has an awkward exit. It's never been one of my best corners, that one. Never really got on with it. Then you have the triple, sorry, the quadruple right-hander. Hit the first apex, kind of missed the second one. But then come back for the third apex. And then the fourth one. That wasn't done too well. But it is my first lap in the car. So you can kind of excuse the, the roughness. And then into the final corner, breaking just before the 100 board. Going quite deep mid-turn before coming back towards that third, or sorry, that second apex. And driving up towards the line. Let's see what this lap time is going to be. My first lap in the car around this track. 30.8. So six tenths off my record in the Porsche. I suppose it's not too bad for a first lap, but we can definitely go way, way better than that. And we're going to have to improve by a couple of seconds before we can really consider it a truly good lap. Now already, you see, I've I've, I've turned the ghost on, 
and that is probably the best way you can improve on this game I would say just to reference yourself against a ghost and on this occasion that ghost is the lap I just did so you can tell immediately if you're doing better or worse and you can experiment with different lines different methods different gears through to certain corners and you can immediately know if it's a better thing to do or a worse thing to do so here I took quite a narrow line to the hairpin I've, I've gained a couple of tenths against the ghost four tenths up on this occasion or at this moment taking slightly better lines through here on the power slightly earlier five and a half temps up as we go down the dip into the quadruple right carrying a lot of speed in waiting for that rotation then on the power boom away we go so this lap definitely better than the previous one up towards the final turn of the lap and i think we can improve through here as well let's go deep get that rotation to come back for that straighter exit car still wanting to slide on the on the way out but it's going to be an improvement as we head up towards the line it's a naught uh, 30.055 which was a solid lap and then that is what brought us towards this race and that was the race i did on the on last week's video but we're focusing on the time trial here so 418th in the world with that 30.055 and um just looking at the times here i need to get well in, in towards the 29s if i want to be in the top 100 in the world so sort of mid or low 29s so 30.0 is a good baseline to start from and it's not bad after just a couple of laps only two laps done so far so with one race now done as well we can now just really focus on trying to improve this lap time and see where we can get in the world so through this chicane this was probably the, it's just the most annoying corner on this track uh, the exit of that third apex of that chicane so so difficult to nail on that occasion there we improved by four tenths lose three tenths in the middle sector and this is the nature of time trialing really where it's a very frustrating process where you're going to gain in some places lose in others and make many many mistakes but on this occasion you can see we are going to go quicker and it's going to be a 29.807 so we've broken the 90 second barrier we're into the 29s but still we can definitely go quicker than this on this occasion here 26.5 through the first sector and i think that's the quickest i've done it so far and that's a tenth better than my best lap so far so let's try and carry that advantage through to the end of, the, of this lap. Uh, th uh, three tenths up compared to that ghost. Compared to the 29.8. So this is a good lap so far. I just need to carry this through to the end. And that's the pressure of time trialing. Knowing that you're up on your lap. Knowing that you're going quicker. And all you have to do is just bring the lap home. But then that kind of in many ways puts more pressure on. Then you overthink it. Then you make a mistake. But here we just keep it nice and cool. We're up by a quarter of a second. Still just ahead of the ghost. In towards the final turn then. Looking for that curb on the right just before the 100 bore. Coast the car in. Off the power. Third gear. It might sound like second's better, but third, I would say, is better. Second, you get way too much oversteer. Coming up to the line, it's going to be a two-tenth improvement. It's going to be a 29.603. And uh, that was not too bad at all. We could go quicker here. We're up by a tenth in towards the final corner. But we're going to get a good exit. Yes, we are. And it's going to be another improvement here. As a, we, again, we are slightly ahead. Up to the line. 29.447. Just chipping away little bits here and there. A little bit wide there. I decided to give up on this, on this run. Which was 14 laps, 20, 21 minutes. 94th in the world with that lap so we're inside the top 100 now that's good but i still think there's more time to be gained so as we come through this first corner first corner was not too bad on this track it's this chicane here this was the most difficult bit of the lap there's no doubt about it over that it looks easy when you get it right but trust me if you get that even 30 centimeters to the left or to the right of perfection you're going to spin 26.2 in that first split so that's a really good that's the that's the best i've done it so far and i managed to carry that through all the way to the final corner 
are we able to improve on this lap? The first two laps of this session are 29.523, both laps. So consistency is good, and the speed is there as well. It's going to be another improvement, 29.302. So the next day, I logged on. So the first day was quite a good session. Managed to put about 100 miles into the car around this track, so good practice. I thought, to kick off this second day... I would watch the number one time in the world. So this is a 1 minute 28.3 done by the Frenchman Mehdi, who is very, very fast at this game. And first off, 26.0 in that first sector. My best was a 26.2, so I'm still two tenths off in that first sector alone. And it really comes down to the exit of that chicane, which is so, so difficult. But the thing that strikes me really about watching these top times, there is a lot to learn, but it's just how perfect they are at maximising absolutely every aspect of the lap. The track limits, the exits, getting on the power exactly at the right time, not too much, not too little, and maximising the line, getting the rotation on the power just at the right moment to really get everything dead right. And it's so, so hard to do. Um, and, and these guys make it look very, very easy. Up to the final corner, breaking pretty much 100 metres before the turn. Again, going deep, third gear. So I'm using the correct gear there, and that's, that's something that you can definitely learn from these ghosts, is which gears they're using. And that lap was going to be a 28.3, so a lot of improvement for me to get. I'm still about a second away from that lap time. So I decided to load a ghost, and this ghost that you can see in front is a 28.7 so i know that if i can follow this ghost around sorry no it's 28.8 28.9 sorry it's 28.9 <laughs> and i felt like if i can just follow this ghost and keep with it then it can kind of pull me around in a sense and i do find that i tend to lap a couple of tenths quicker by following a ghost and this ghost was Good, really good for the first sector, but I, was, I think I was better in certain places. And on this lap, as you can see, I was keeping with it for the most part. And if I'm able to keep with the ghost all the way through the lap, then I'm going to lap, well, the same lap time as the ghost on this occasion, a 28.9. You see, the I would say it's pulled away slightly, definitely on the exit of that final turn. But it'd be interesting to see what this lap time is going to be. As we head up to the line, 28, 29.132. So not the 28 that I was looking for, but it is still an improvement. Up to P68 in the world. Just one away. But um, let's try and improve again. 29.1 there on that lap. 26.3 in the first split. Coming down towards... Um, well, here we make a mistake. So this lap was a write-off anyway. doesn't matter what I was about to say. Just pushing a little bit too hard, I would say, at this point. And this is the difficulty. This is where it gets really hard because normally when I'm about one second away from the number one time in the world, that's where things get difficult. It gets really hard to really get much more time past that. So you can see here a couple of mistakes being made. And yeah, pretty much it went like that for a while. But here, 26.2, first split. Okay, that's good. Let's see if we can continue that. I felt really good through this hairpin. And if anything, I think I was gaining on the ghost compared to other corners. So that, that hairpin felt good for me. This middle sector, I think, was probably my strongest sector out of the three. And keeping, keeping with it. Keeping with the 28.9 ghost. And so far, this, this is about as good as it's been for me. A 28.1 there in, in the second sector. And that's after a 26.2 in the first sector. So pretty solid sectors there. Losing slightly on the exit of the quadruple right. You can see the ghost just pulls away, let's say, a car length on the exit there. Just by getting on the power slightly earlier with better rotation. In towards the final corner. Gaining on the way in. But you're always going to technically gain on the way... Uh, sorry, lose on the way out compared to another car that's in front. I think this is closer. Let's see what the lap time is going to be. 29.07 so now we're just shaving off half a tenth each time so the gains are going to become incrementally smaller at this point there another big mistake we decide to back out 
Let's see what that lap time did for us for the leaderboard. 54th in the world. And then we're back into it. Let's go once again. We, we improve by two thousandths. Quite, an impro uh, quite a frustrating improvement, but, um, but it put me up one more position to 53rd. And we go again. And uh, making another mistake there. And I felt like if I made a mistake, you know, you've got to retry. You see here, it was like this for pretty much an hour. Lots of mistakes on this chicane. It was so hard to get it dead right. I wasn't getting the angle, wasn't getting the entry, wasn't getting the exit, wasn't getting on the power at the right time. You name it, I was doing it. Apart from getting it right. But here, can we get it right? Yes, not too bad. We got the angle good. The ghost is pulling away, but it wasn't too bad. At the end of the second sector, keeping with it, 26.2 first split, 28.0 second split. Both solid sectors by my standards. And coming in towards the final quarter, this is the best shot we've got of breaking the 29 barrier. Let's see if we can do it. Carry the speed, go deep. Third gear on the power. Not the best exit. But is it going to be an improvement? Let's see. No, not quite. 29.1. So frustrating because of that final corner. But here's going to be my best middle sector, at least so far. Okay, let's play it through. As uh, the sector begins as we come down towards the hairpin. And I was really comfortable with firing in that speed on the apex, second gear, on the power, maximize the curb on the exit. And that was a really good hairpin. That's about as good as I've ever taken it. Carry the speed through there. You should better go flat through that left. Over the curb, bit of grass. Keep it to the right. Turn in nice and early. Maximize the curb on the power. Don't run too wide. Down the dip. And then boom. It's a 27.956. That is the fastest I have done the second sector so far. But unluckily for me, I was pushing way too hard. And went way too deep on the final turn. And completely ruined it. And you can see the frustration in my driving here as I pretty much well now you get the idea it was very frustrating there's three sectors on the lap I seem to be able to do one good one sometimes two and then I'd always mess up the third one or one of the three it was really really frustrating to get this dead right on this lap 28-0 second split 26-3 first split that's a good combo so far can we finally get this final corner right i would actually say this is the hardest corner for me i was struggling to really get this one a dead right it is going to be an improvement though let's see how much by 29.068 to beat it goes to a 29.038 uh, 29, that put me in the top 50 49th in the world so I was slowly creeping up the leaderboard slowly but surely albeit with tons of frustration and lots of mistakes and uh, as we come through here again closest i have ever been to this ghost 28 uh, 28 0 second split 26 2 first split can we get this final corner slightly better it's so hard to get that judgment exactly right and you see unfortunately my right hand tire just went slightly over the white line it pulled me wide and by this point i wanted to smash my head against a wall in frustration because it was that annoying But how about this lap? It's been it's been a good lap so far. Slightly further from Ghost. Drinking game for the word Ghost, by the way. But can we get a good exit? If I can get a good exit, then it's not too bad. That was not that was decent, I would say. Probably about as good as I've done it so far. Let's see what the lap time is going to be. It's going to be a twenty nine zero zero two. Um, again, another improvement up to forty sixth. And now it is finally time to try to break into the 28s. If I could do a, a 28, it will put me within the same second as the number one in the world. So let's see if we can do it. And I felt like often my first lap in a session would be the best lap because there's no delta. There's nothing to compare yourself to other than the ghost. So you don't really have to worry about time delta, only the ghost. And I find that maybe this is the best way through, just to keep restarting and just doing one lap, restart one lap. I find that I tend to get better results that way. But here, you see a, a good run through the first chicane. 
bit of oversteer on the exit, and nothing too bad. Probably losing a tenth down this straight because of that. It's a 26.2 first split. That's solid. That's good. Into the hairpin. We know we're all right through here, carrying the speed all the way in to the apex. Second gear onto the power, and I've definitely gained on that ghost through there. Carry the speed through the left. Fire the speed into the right, over the curb, gaining against this against this guy on the exit better exit if anything down the dip commit early over this curb second gear for rotation back to third for the acceleration and this is good this is as good as it's been and it's just a case of not messing up this damn final corner which has so been my nemesis so far as we fire it in deep third gear exit Oh, a bit of oversteer, but it was not too bad. It's as close as I've been. Let's see. As we head to the line, it's going to be 28.934. Finally done it. We've finally broken into the 1 minute 28 at long last after nearly 300 miles of trying. And as you can see, the crowd went absolutely ballistic. All seven pixels of it. And that lap put me P40 in the world. Now the next day, I had slid down to 45th in the world, courtesy of other people, you know, improving their times. But it was time to try to just chip away once again. I reminded myself of the top time, you know, just watching it again, just really seeing how they're doing it. Just really learning as much as I possibly can from the top time. And there is so much to be learned from these guys. And, you know, racing a ghost, comparing yourself to the best, learning from the best is, is one of the best ways to learn. There's no doubt about that. And I decided to try to go against the number one time in the world. This is never going to be easy. And there is an art, I think, in choosing the correct ghost. And this is an example of why choosing too good of a ghost is not a good thing. Because through here, it's just so difficult to keep up. And see, on this occasion, I just completely screwed up. But how about this occasion? Uh, through the first corner, firing in maybe a little bit too early, and you can see they get uh, a much better exit, but still about the same um, distance or same gap on the exit through here. Getting a good line and actually not following too dissimilarly to the ghost. But that is the problem in itself that I have to be perfect, otherwise, the ghost gets too far away. So here I did a 26.123, and that is the fastest I've ever done that first sector. Um, but by the end of the lap, you see the ghost just begins to pull away too much and you can't use it as a reference when it's really sort of beyond 10 car lengths away. So it was good if you keep up with it, but I can't keep up with it. It's too fast for me. So I decided um, to change it ultimately. And you see here, it would just pull away too much on the exit of that corner. And you see here through the middle sector, it's just too far too far away from me and I can't really follow its lines as easy from this sort of distance so that's why following the number one ghost for me just didn't really work so I felt like following this ghost here uh, GTR the Australian the 28.7 so it's two tenths quicker than my lap time and you can see here it's just a little bit closer to me even if I mess up the first sector um, it was not too bad you can see here this was a really good session lots of 28 nines and lots of consistency, lots of very low 29s or very high 28s. So the consistency was good. So this lap here, or sorry, this session here, nine, uh, eight laps so far, all you know, averaging sort of very low 29 or high tw high 28. But the thing about that, my my uh, optimum laps are 28.7. So if I if I hook together my best sectors, a 20 uh, a 28.7 is theoretically possible uh, so let's see if we can do that here following the ghost uh, which is the 28.7 the low seven I think that is important to specify that it's a seven zero rather than like a seven nine because at this point in time it does matter uh, you know any sort of half attempt does matter through the first sector what's it gonna be 26.204 
So now I was more consistently in the low 26s. So 26 twos, which was good. Earlier on in the day or earlier in the week, I was getting sort of 26 fives and 26 fours. So I was getting better, slowly better, more consistent for each sector, which was good overall. Is it going to be an improvement here? Yes, by 0.005, which was a very frustrating kind of improvement, if I must say so. And it's really how time trialing goes. You 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 try a hundred times and you improve by 0.05. And I yeah, 0.05, not not 0.005. Uh, but by this point here, 44th in the world, and I gave up on that day after doing over a hundred miles once again for the third day in a row. But the next day, we're going to jump back in. Now down to 58th in the world, which was quite frustrating to see to see yourself drop in. So I had to get back out there and go once again. And it was really difficult. It's you know you're at you're at that time now where to gain anything is so so hard, and um, you know it's just, it's just going to take forever to gain even the smallest amount. But I'm confident. That I can, if I can hook up my best sectors in one lap, I know that there's a big improvement in store. So here, again, another consistent session. Lots of 28 nines and 29 zeros and ones. Another 28 nine there. And this lap here, guys, is going to be, this is going to be a goat tier lap, at least by my standards anyway. Let's see then. In towards the chicane. Fire it in, carry the speed. Not as good as the ghost. The ghost is a 28.5. Carry the speed over the chicane. That actually wasn't a good exit at all. You can see I'm getting dropped easily. It's a 26.373, which is nah, it's about a tenth and a half off. It's a well, in fact, it's a quarter of a, a quarter of a second away from my PB through that sector. But let's continue for the rest of the lap. In towards the middle sector here. Good through that left, into the right. Carry the speed in early. And if anything, I've gained on against the ghost on those two corners. Down the dip, 27.905 in sector two. That's the best I have done it. That is my personal best, sector two. And it's a shame that I couldn't hook up sector one. But let's see, in towards the final corner, which has been so, so difficult for us so far. Get on the brakes at the right time, carry the speed in, get the turning in right off the power third gear on the power good exit car wanted to oversteer a little bit but it wasn't too bad let's see what it's going to be it's going to be a 128.780 so we improved by more than a tenth into the sevens we've skipped the 28 eights straight into the 28 sevens and that is a lap i am very very happy with and we can finally end that session there 11 laps in and Look at that, a 28.6 was possible if I connected all of my best sectors. So there's still time to be gained, but at the moment here, 31st in the world. So very, very solid showing so far. Now, I left it a couple of days and I come back on Sunday. So the final chance to really improve my time, currently sat at 40th in the world. And let's see if we can just have one last hurrah before the week is out can i improve upon the 128.780 i knew that i could i knew that there was potential my best lap time i did a, a, a 373 in the first sector and i could do a, a point one so i knew that there's two temps to be found i could do a point five if i hooked everything up i knew it was possible but there was something about this final day that made it so difficult. I felt like there was a bit more pressure because I was running out of time and I wasn't quite as relaxed as I probably should have been. I was getting more consistent through the first sector. As you can see, he's just making lots of mistakes on the rest of the lap. I was, I was getting lots of 26 ones in sector one, but then I will just do stupid errors elsewhere on the track. And it was so, so difficult to get it right and you see here, just making another mistake through that chicane. Ultimately here, I ended the session P41 in the world. 
And to be honest, it was a bit frustrating I couldn't get a bit higher, but ultimately I think I was happy with it. My best first sector, 26.1. My best second sector was a 27,905. And my best sec uh, third sector was a 34,502. And if you combine all of those sectors together, we can create a theoretical best lap. So there are my best sectors. And the best lap I probably could have done is a 128.530. So I knew that there was really good potential to get very close to the top 10 in the world. In fact, if I had done a 530, it would have put me about here, 13th in the world at the end of the week. So I know that there's potential here to really become a top, top level player. Not just a top player, but there's another level to get towards that elite tier of player on this game. I feel like I'm getting there, but there's a bit more work to be done. That was a very good session for me. As frustrating as it was to sometimes or mostly fail, I learned a lot. There's a lot of improvements made. And I think if you want to get better at this game, this is the way to do it. Lots of time trialing, lots of practice, lots of laps, lots of learning, and a lot of difficulty. The race I mentioned earlier on in this video is now on the screen if you want to watch it. But thank you for watching this one. I will catch you next time. Have a good day. Goodbye.